Hello! Welcome to a new episode of History in 7 Facts, the show in which we explore some interesting episodes of humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. The Hindenburg disaster was one of the most notorious accidents of the 20th century. For a lot of time it was thought and it felt obvious that the cause of the accident was the use of the highly flammable hydrogen gas. What was it? In the afternoon of May the 6th, 1937, the mighty Hindenburg, the largest airship in the world, was arriving late at the Lakehurst Field in New Jersey due to a storm it encountered over the Atlantic. At the ground, a group of reporters and some 200 technicians were waiting for the mighty ship to dock. On board, there were 36 passengers and 61 crewmen. But the first sign of trouble soon appeared. A blue spark, like the ones produced by electricity, flashed along the starboard side. Passengers and witnesses alike immediately understood that the Hindenburg caught fire. The fire spread amazingly fast and the airship soon started to crash. Herb Morrison was a reporter at the scene and recorded the event on tape. The ground technicians started fleeing the scene as they were right under the flaming airship. But through the speakers they were told to head back and help the survivors. Miraculously, 23 passengers and 39 crew members survived, 35 didn't. After the accident, it was immediately presumed that the Hindenburg caught fire due to the gas that was used, hydrogen. It was thought that the hydrogen exploded for some reason, confirming the fears of many around the world that the gas was too dangerous to be used in airships. But there were many other airships around the world in use. The Graf Zeppelin, for instance, completed 144 transatlantic flights, carrying 18,000 passengers over, without any sort of event. But the Hindenburg was different, and its demise meant the end of airships. Both the United States government and that of Nazi Germany conducted their own investigations. Both came to the same conclusion. The hydrogen gas caught fire due to some damaged wires. But none of the crew members noticed anything strange, nor did they smell anything funny. The hydrogen gas was infused with a strong garlic-like odor, just like butane is added to propane gas today, in order for people to detect any leakage. Many believed that the investigations were a fraud, and someone was trying to cover up what really happened. Hermann Göring, the aviation minister of Germany, publicly said that he suspected sabotage, which fueled the conspiracy theories. More than 60 years after the accident, Dr. Addison Bain, a scientist at NASA, took matters into his own hands and started investigating what happened. He believed there was enough evidence to suspect that hydrogen was not to blame for this disaster. Everyone at the time stated that the hydrogen exploded, but in fact we can clearly see that the Hindenburg did not explode and the fire spread fast, but gradually. The airship remained afloat for seconds before it started crashing towards the ground. An explosion would have immediately destroyed the entire ship, which would have killed everyone on board. But this was clearly not the case. So what happened? Every eyewitness stated the same thing, a bright flame covered the entire ship. But hydrogen couldn't have caused this brightness. When it burns, the flames are invisible to the naked eye. All you can see is a tremor of the air itself, caused by its rapid dilation. Dr. Edison Bain is a NASA specialist. He's seen enough lunches to know that the bright flames couldn't have come from the hydrogen gas. Furthermore, hydrogen is 14 times lighter than air. But the fire on the Hindenburg was spreading downwards, then spreading to the sides. To be sure, Edison started testing his ideas. He analyzed the footage, searched the archives in Germany and questioned some of the eyewitnesses that were still alive. He even got hold of the actual remains of the airship. His conclusions were definite. Hydrogen didn't cause the airship to burn up. 
Dr. Addison analyzed the airship's shell, the balloon pot. He found that it was composed of iron oxide and five layers of cellulose acetate. These had the purpose to protect the outside shell from moist and rot. But the man is a NASA scientist. He immediately recognized the mixture. That stuff is basically rocket fuel. Without ever realizing, the engineers of the Hindenburg covered the thing with some of the most flammable substances known to man. In addition, the airship was coated with aluminum powder to give it a metallic look. Other airships of the time had different coatings and the Hindenburg's coating was a new concept. But we know today that aluminum powder is also quite flammable. Parts of the Hindenburg's remains were tested in the lab, and even after more than 60 years, they burned up just as fast as they did in 1937. But this was only part of the problem. This specific coating is not electrically conductive. This means that static electricity could easily build up. In lab conditions, the samples were subjected to a high-tension electric field, similar to what the Hindenburg would have experienced during the storm. The samples caught fire again and burned up in seconds. According to the theory, the static electricity that built up in the airship discharged when the Hindenburg came close to the ground. The small electric arcs that formed would have been enough to cause a fire. Amazingly, an electrical engineer of the time, Otto Beiersdorf, came to the exact same conclusion, but was entirely disregarded. For some reason, Hugo Eckener, the manager of Zeppelin Company, fervently stated that the reason for the accident was the hydrogen gas. But Eckener also knew about Beiersdorf's report and he more than likely believed him. We know this because, at the time, the Graf Zeppelin II, the Hindenburg sister ship, was under construction and Eckener ordered the urgent alteration of the airship's coating. Although there is no proof of this, it's more than likely that Eckener was forced to keep quiet by the German authorities. It was pretty much unacceptable for them to admit that German engineers could have made such a major mistake. It was a time when the might and superiority of the Aryan race was a lot more important than the truth. Nevertheless, airships were never again trusted and their popularity plunged to zero. And now you know why. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.